Second, jobs. The idea of our MPs spending their time doing something other than MPing has been quite a controversial subject amongst the public for some time now. Historically, maintaining multiple jobs has allowed our representatives to keep a foot in the door of civilian life. As doctors, teachers and lawyers progressed into politics, outside employment allowed them to keep their skills current as well as serving the public good. The problem is, and you're not going to believe this, some MPs have been taking the piss a bit. Today we're going to take a look at the most popular arguments for and against MPs bagging some extra dollar, and why change is quite unlikely under our current government. But first, I want to thank the sponsor of today's video, MyHeritage. MyHeritage is the number one service when it comes to researching your family history. They give you access to over 19 billion historical documents to help uncover your family's history, and with access to their Instant Discoveries feature you can match family members with existing users to find new relatives and even pictures of existing family. The website is super easy to use, and adding somebody to your family tree is as easy as typing in a few details and hitting OK. You want to add a photo? Just click the image box, drag and drop the image that you want and it's job done. They even offer DNA testing kits so you can match with people all over the world even if they've used another DNA service. It really is something quite special, and I personally will be using this service to print high quality images of my family tree to put in my study and give to my family as gifts. Sign up for a 14 day free trial and enjoy all of MyHeritage's amazing features. If you decide to continue with your subscription, you'll get a 50% discount by following the link in the description or by just scanning the QR code. Thank you again to MyHeritage. So why do MPs have second jobs? Well, it's simple. They're people too. I know it's gross, but it's sort of true. You know, they eat, they shit, and some are even capable of human expression. Keep at it champ, you'll work it out. As I said at the start of the video, politicians have historically been a varied bunch and maintaining an active life outside of their political office helped them keep perspective on issues that their constituents faced. The modern day politician, however, is one that's gone from private school to prestigious college to MP's assistant to MP. Career politicians are far more prevalent than they have ever been, but despite that, our MPs have logged a total of 89,000 hours and earned £17.1 million working for outside employers since 2019. Let's take a second and have a look at the rules. The current rules are that MPs are allowed to have second jobs just so long as they're not a minister. A minister is somebody chosen by the Prime Minister to lead a department. While there is no limit on the amount of hours that they can work for an outside employer, they must declare any individual payment of over £100 from outside employment, as well as any payments totalling over £300 from the same employer in a single calendar year. The reason these rules are oddly specific is because, and I'm sure that you're struggling with this bit, some MPs were taking the piss a bit. First, there was the Cash for Question scandal in the 90s, in which MPs were discovered to be accepting money from businesses in return for asking parliamentary questions. Also, let's not forget the Expenses scandal, which included the likes of MP Douglas Hogg claiming over £2,000 to clean the moat surrounding his 13th century manor, and MP for Gosport Peter Vigors, who claimed 30 thousand pounds towards gardening which included 500 pounds for actual literal shit and 1600 pounds on a float in duck house rest assured he did eventually end up footing the bill sorry now let's perhaps take a look at a few of the reasons one might justify an mp holding multiple jobs then we can come to a conclusion on what the best course of action might be if the plan is to maintain or indeed create integrity in politics. Argument 1. If we restrict people from having second jobs, then we will lose the really talented politicians who could make more money elsewhere. Now, This is probably the most popular argument and isn't a bad one either. Psych, it's a dumb argument, you big dumb idiot. 
it makes the assumption that there is a direct link between how capable one is at their job and the amount of money that they earn. If you've worked any job ever, you'll know that that's not the case. It also not only implies that these people are only in politics for the money, but that the system itself should accommodate that attitude rather than attracting people with integrity. Still, in the interest of science and stuff, let's have a look at a few of the highest earners and see the calibre of politician that we would be unfortunate enough to lose if we were to limit second jobs. Boris Johnson. Throughout his career he has consistently written for both The Spectator and The Daily Mail. In the 11 month period between resigning as PM and resigning as MP, Boris made approximately £6.3 million between various speaking gigs, writings, donations and gifts. Liz Truss. She made £20,000 an hour, nearly 1,500 times the average UK hourly wage, at a speaking gig in Taiwan in which she spoke about global diplomacy. Despite the fact that she spent more time giving the speech than she did as Prime Fucking Minister, she currently has the highest hourly rate of any sitting MP at £15,000 an hour. Geoffrey Cox Cox by name and cock by nature, he is a Conservative MP for Torridge and West Devon and a former Attorney General. He earned over £2.2 million in the last three years by providing legal advice for the tax haven that is the British Virgin Islands, which is, spoiler alert, being investigated by our own government due to concerns of corruption. And granted, that's a bit like Kim Jong-un investigating you for having a shite haircut, but it is what it is. With these cases in mind, I don't think that we should expect to see a mass exodus of, you know, talent from the political ranks. Now I know I don't talk about them a lot, but the majority of MPs are good people trying to do good things for their community. I know it sounds a bit wanky, but emotional intelligence and a strong moral character are far more important than the ability to utilise your platform to rake in hundreds of thousands of pounds speaking at corporate events. My belief is that for every Boris Johnson that we lose, we would gain a Mari Black or a Darren Jones, you know, someone who at least gives some shits about being honest. Argument 2. People want more flexibility and being able to work for more than one employer is a key part of that freedom. Politicians are people and should be allowed to do the same thing. Ah. The William Wallace defence. We just want freedom, and politicians are people too, don't you know? Now don't get me wrong, having unfettered freedom to do as you please is great and everything, but people also want the freedom to put pineapple on pizza, so you can't ever really trust that they won't go and do something mental. The truth is that career politicians are more prevalent now than ever and we should be putting measures in place that prevent our MPs from being exploited, even if they aren't complicit. Being an MP is a fairly unique job with a fairly unique amount of power and influence, and our government should be invested in loosening the ties to companies and corporate interests and more engaged in the communities that they are meant to serve. This is a key step in realising that future. Now, there are genuinely beautiful examples of MPs utilising their expertise to do the right thing. For example, during Covid, MPs Mariah Caulfield, Dan Poulter and Luke Evans – no, not that one, yes, that one – all returned to work as nurses, psychiatrists and GPs in order to help bolster the healthcare services during Covid. Now, some will hide behind these examples to prevent change, but don't be confused – these are not the same as Matt Hancock and Quasi Quateng whoring themselves out as political advisers to any prick with a website and a credit card. Argument 3. More and more politicians become MPs after working as staff for MPs, which means less diversity of professional experience. Second jobs allow politicians to gain more experience professionally. Now, I know that this argument is a complete total pile of cock, and you know that this argument is a complete total pile of cock, but I still feel compelled to burn brain cells addressing it. If career politicians are eager to establish a level of diversity in professional experience, then perhaps we could see a bit of, you know, 
Diversity. 61% of our current government ministers went to private school. Of the 31 ministers that made up Rishi Sunak's cabinet, nearly half of them went to Oxford or Cambridge. It's not just the Conservatives, either. In a piece from the Institute for Public Policy Research, or IPPR, the amount of Labour politicians that come from working-class backgrounds has dropped sharply, making way for those with backgrounds in finance and politics. Because if there's one thing the last few recessions have shown us, it's that our bankers need more representation in politics. There is, however, a reason why you could possibly see a bit of a party divide on this issue. Since 2019, MPs have made, in total, £17.1 million on top of their MP salary. Now, let's have a guess at why it might be particularly hard to get reform under the Conservative Party. Well, if you guessed, geez, it's probably because of the £17.1 million earned by MPs that £15.2 million was earned specifically by members of the Conservative Party, you'd be absolutely fucking right, mate. 89% of external payments made to MPs went to Conservatives, despite them making up 54% of MPs. Now that's not to say that all Conservatives are bad, you understand, but party whips exist to ensure that the MPs vote in a way that's maximally beneficial to those that are steering the ship. If most senior members of the party are making a killing, and the ministers are lining themselves up for a nice payday after they royally fuck their actual jobs up, then there's no incentive for them to reform the system. You know, except for it being the right thing to do, and that we should expect our politicians to do the right thing for the people that they represent, but that's practically crossing over into high fantasy. Now don't get me wrong, you're allowed to be pissed off that Nadine Dorries gets to phone it in as an MP while she appears on I'm a Celebrity, GB News, and writing what is admittedly a masterpiece of quasi-fictional proto-historical romance. You're allowed to be pissed off that Owen Patterson used his position to lobby for two different companies without declaring any income at all, and you are absolutely welcome to be fully pissed off that our then Prime Minister and actual sentient lump of smegma Boris Johnson tried to overhaul the misconduct system to stop Owen Cunderson from being suspended. So what can we do? Fuck knows, but here's what I would like to see. One. MPs should not hold positions of work outside of politics. Simple. MPs like Jacob Rees-Mogg, Lee Anderson, Nadine Dorries, and David Lammy should not be pocketing tens, if not hundreds of thousands of pounds, presenting shows on GB News and LBC. It's especially gross to see Tory MPs on news shows acting as propagandists for their own government. There should be a handful of exceptions that allow MPs to maintain qualifications or if their profession is in the service of the public good, such as being a nurse, doctor, or law enforcement. 2. There should be a cap on how many hours an MP can work in any role outside of their political occupation. This cap could be lifted in times of crisis, like during Covid, but MPs should be expected to spend their time in a way that is beneficial to their constituents. And I don't think that's a terribly controversial position to take. When you elect a parliamentary representative, you are implicitly supporting the idea of that person spending their time representing the best interests of you and your area. It's absolutely within reason to expect that representative not to pursue their own interests at the detriment of yours. And if there is a broader consensus that our politicians are spending too much time hustling, then you have the right to demand that action is taken to fix that problem. Now I understand that most things in politics are not black and white, there's plenty of grey areas, but with that being said, I think that we should have the balls to tackle at least the dark grey stuff, you know? If you're genuinely worried that taking these precautions will impede our ability to find good people to serve the public for over £7,000 a month, then you greatly misunderstand the sheer amount of talent held by members of the public. A salary of £86,000 a year puts you straight into the top 5% of earners in the country. 
As Owen Jones pointed out in his article, our greatest national institution, the NHS, was not created by a heavily remunerated bureaucrat, but a poorly educated ex-miner in Anarin Bevan. Our problem isn't that we lack good people in this country who are willing to do the job. Our problem is that we are unwilling to change the system to allow such people to enter into it in the first place. Thank you for watching. Before I sign off, I'd love to hear what topics you guys would like me to cover next. Leave a comment below with your suggestions and thumbs up any comments you'd like to gain some traction. I'll be reading each and every one of them. A big thank you to my gorgeous and wonderful patrons who make all of this possible. Marie, Jeffrey Anderson, Fluffy the Demon, Destroyer of Worlds, Nice, Alex Davies, Cloda Martin, Craig Hall, Simon Watton, Matthew Gray, Lord Kitty Cat, Rory McElhone, Alexis Geddes, Nicholas Daniel Richards, Paul Ashworth, Alex Ray, Jacqueline Cowan, Oleg Vodolashki, Tommy Schl Shuttermask, Billy Clem, and Graham Cox. You guys are simply the loves of my life. If you'd like to subscribe, you can do so from just £1 a month. In doing so, you can legally call yourself a geezer, and the police cannot stop you. Love you. Bye-bye.